Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the prophetic significance of the 37th book of the Bible. The 37th book of the Bible is the book of Haggai. That's the only book of the Bible that has just two chapters. There's no other book. Haggai is the only book of the Bible that has two chapters. That's the 37th book of the Bible. And um, every book of the Bible is where it is because of its message. Every book of the Bible, every word of God is a word in season. Every book of the Bible is where it is because of the prophetic role of that book. The Bible is a prophetic book. It's not just, uh, it's not just about uh, the teachings, it's not just about the history. The Bible is a prophetic book. If it's about history, then the books of the Bible would have been in chronological order. And then the place you will find in the book of Haggai will be in the middle of Ezra, or somewhere between chapter 4 and chapter 5 of Ezra. That's where you will see Haggai. But it's not about a historical arrangement. The arrangement of the books of the Bible is not historical. If it is historical, Job, the 18th book of the Bible, would have been the first because there is no mention of Israel, there is no mention of Jacob, there is no mention of Noah, there is no mention of Abraham. That means that the book of Job must have preceded their era. So every book of the Bible is where it is because of its prophetic assignment in the, the prophetic role is made. So every book of the Bible is where it is because of the season it speaks to. So the 37th book of the Bible is 37th in the Bible because it speaks to the 37th season. It speaks to the 37th season. And it has companions in the it has companions in the the 37 chapters of the Bible. The 37 chapters of the Bible are like companions of the 37 book in the spirit. You may look like they don't have anything to do together. No, they do. They have something to do together. <laughs> so now think of it. Um, Exodus chapter 37 is about the house of God, the tabernacle of God. Isaiah 37 is about the house of God. And then the 37 book of the Bible is about the house of God. So they have something to do together. They have something to do together. So the, the 37 book of the Bible is where it is because um, it is supposed to show us what happens in the 37 season. It's of, it's, it wants to show us what is important in this season. You can't do without it. That's what the 37 book of the Bible wants to highlight. You know, uh, when Jesus was talking to Mary and Martha, and Martha was complaining that Mary is just, Mary has left me to do all the work. Jesus said, Martha, you are, you are worried about so many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that. So, the, the, the 37 book of the Bible, you know, wants to highlight the one thing that is important in the 37 season. That without that, nothing else works. Without this one thing in the 37 season, nothing else works. And what is that thing? It is the house of God needs to be in place. The house of God needs to be intact. And the house of God is a house of prayer. It means that prayer fire should be intact in the 37 season. Without it, nothing is going to be in place. Now what happened? In Ezra chapter 4, the adversaries of Judah rose against those who had returned you know, uh, from Babylonian captivity to rebuild the temple. And then the adversaries rose, petitioned, you know, wrote, a, uh, wrote, a, wrote a petition against them, and then the, the king made a decree that the building should stop because they were accused of building without authorization. So the, the people now realize and say, well, we wanted to build, but the authorities have not allowed us to build. So it must be that this is not the time to build. So we need to return to our homes. 
And then everybody went back to their paneled houses and said, well, it is not time to build. But what happened? You saw that in their experience, in their experience, you gather much, you have nothing left. You labor and nothing comes in. So the people were suffering. It's like, we're working, but we can't see results. There are no fruits. Nothing to show for all the labor. Nothing to show. Even those who bring in the money, you know, God said, because you left my house, I made you put your money in bags with holes and everything just disappeared. So the book of Haggai shows us what happens in the 37th season that when people abandon the house of God, when people abandon prayer, when people abandon prayer, abandon, you know, the house of God. We are the house of God right now. Yeah, we are the house of God. We are the house of prayer. God lives in us. So when God is not given a place among men, when God does not find a place among men in the 37th season, it's trouble. It's trouble. It's trouble. Without God, God's presence in the life of Joseph, there is no way. Because Joseph had become a small house of God. Visions of the future were coming to him. He was a carrier of the presence of God. That was already in place. That was what delivered him from death. Because the enemy had meant to destroy his life. They already had plans. They knew what they were going to say. Here comes a dreamer. We will kill him and we will say that the wild beast had torn him apart. But God did not allow them to kill Joseph. Because that was like a human tabernacle of God. At that time, he was the house of prayer. In Isaiah 37, we see the same thing happening. Sennacherib came against Judah, threatened Judah, wrote a letter. King Hezekiah took that letter and spread it before God in the house of God and prayed to God. If the house of God is not in place in the 37th season, it is disaster. That is the pain when you see God's people, you know, torn apart by divisions, you know, torn about by disunity. Things, you know, when we should be together, we are just here and there. Torn apart by different things, arguing and debating about this. When there is only one thing that will become the dwelling place of God on earth. That's the purpose of the church. That will become the dwelling place of God on earth. Say, the tabernacle of God is with men. Say, do you not know that you are the house of God? What else are we supposed to do? Is to house God. I pray that this week, I mean in, in the 37th season, that your family will house God. Your life will house God. I mean, you, your business will house God. That is that's the key to protection and preservation in this season. That's the key to protection and preservation in this season. That you house God. You house God. So, because Hezekiah prayed in the house of God, the plans of Seneca, you know, God scattered the plans of the king of Assyria. Mm. So he scattered the plans of the king of Assyria because they prayed. The king went to the house of God and prayed. When the house of God is in place, this is what Psalm 37 says, say, do not fret because of the evil doers nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be caught now like the grass and wither like the tree. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land 
and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as a light. Verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not uh, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret his only causes some, for evil doers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. <laughs> so the house of God is it. The house of God is it. So that's what we have in the book of Haggai to show that the house of God is very important, is primary in the 37th season. That is what this book is about. That when we run after everything else and do not care much about the house of God, then we are looking for trouble. We are courting disaster. We are courting disaster. And I pray that the Lord will give you understanding that when, when <clears throat> you come into a 37th season, whether it's a, a nation is coming into a 37th year, if a nation is coming into a 37th year or into a 37th seven, seven years, 37th seven, seven years, yeah, the United States will be will be entering the 37 seven years from 2028, 20, July 4. The journey into the 37 seven years of the United States will begin. Is a season to be sure that the house of God is in place. So, so whether a marriage is in the 37th year is a time to pray. Or after the 36th year, and you are entering the 37th year, is a time to pray. Or that sixth birthday and getting into the 36th, that seventh year is a time to pray. Because the wicked have plans for that season. But the house of God can neutralize everything. That's why in Psalm 37, it said, Once God is in place, do not fret because of evil doers. Don't worry about them. Don't care. They won't prosper, they won't succeed. I pray for you that as you know you you know anyone who has something to do with age 37 or be the 37th year, the seventh year of a nation, the seventh year of a family, the that seventh year of an of a business, the seventh year of an individual, you know, or the that seven seven years of any nation is a time to put the house of God in place. There should be no excuse, there should be no reason for abandoning the house of God or for abandoning the place of prayer in this season. The Lord bless you. Jesus Christ.